Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This should be the last Bible studies on the Godhead series. I hope you've enjoyed it. I mean, you know, God is one. God is one. Absolutely. In 1 Timothy 2 and verse 5, For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. And then people like the Jehovah's Witnesses will say, See, see, this proves Jesus is just a mere man. But uh, I hope you looked at all the other um, stuff and know and realize that, uh, <laughs> you know, Christ was doing things that uh, only God can do. So, in Ephesians 4, 5, we read, One Lord, one faith, one baptism. There's only one faith. You know, these people say, well, I'm a Baptist, I'm a Pentecostal, I'm a Lutheran, I'm a Anglican, I'm a Catholic. No, there's only one faith. And, and I don't claim to have the only one true one. I don't claim that at all. I'm absolutely sure that I'm wrong on some things, but I try not to be. Best I can, anyway, so... In Deuteronomy 6 and verse 4, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. So, there you go. Now, in Psalms 2-7, I will declare the decree. The Lord hath said unto me, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. Christ was not a created being. Begotten has reference to being of the same essence. I mean, you're begotten of your parents. In Hebrews chapter 5, verse 1, For every high priest taken from among men is ordained for men and things pertaining to God, that he may offer both gifts and sacrifices for sins. Who can have compassion on the ignorant and on them that are out of the way? For that he himself also is compassed, compassed with infirmity. You know, we're all... We're all encompassed or surrounded by infirmity. You know, our bodies are frail. One day you're going to, chances are, if you live to be 100, 120 years old, you're going to die. If you even live that long. So, and by reason hereof, he ought for, as for the people, so also for himself to offer for sins. And no man taketh this honor unto himself, but he that is called of God, as was Aaron. Aaron was a Levite. He was the brother of Moses, the tribe of Levi. They were called of God. Verse 5. So also Christ glorified not himself to be made an high priest, but he that uh, but he that said unto him, now this is God speaking to Christ, Thou art my son, today have I begotten thee. As he saith also in another place, Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek, who in the days of his flesh, remember, Christ was God in the flesh, who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplications with strong crying 
and tears unto him that was able to save him from death and was heard in that he feared. Though he were a son, he learned, yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. Obey. You know, there's people say, oh, just believe in Jesus. Well, the Bible does a little bit more than that. If you believe Jesus, you'll obey Jesus. And then there's heretics who'll say, well, if you obey, you're trying to earn your salvation. They call that the Lordship Salvation Heresy. Well, Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. And the two commandments, right? Love the Lord, love thy neighbor. And hopefully you don't live next to a bunch of Satanists. Or, yeah. Called of God and high priest after the order of Melchizedek, of whom we have many things to say and hard, hard to be uttered, seeing you're dull of hearing. I guess they need to go to a, a, a hearing specialist because, you know, they can talk, but they don't listen. For when, for the time, ye ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God. You know, you ought to become te teachers, but instead you're still stuck in uh, kindergarten. which be the first principles of the oracles of God and are become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. Yeah, you're like a bunch of babies. You haven't even been weaned yet, but you ought to be teachers. For everyone that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age even those who, by reason of use, have their senses exercised to, to discern both good and evil. Now here's a, probably the most famous Bible verse in the entire Western world. Well, in America, anyways. John 3.16, For God so loved, past tense, I don't think he loves this present world. For God so loved, past tense, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, his only begotten son, there's only one, his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Well, guess what? If you read the NIV, they get rid of the word begotten there. And it actually, in the, I think it was the 84 edition, there's several revisions of the NIV and they've changed things and changed things. And then when you, uh, somebody like Gail Ripplinger comes along and says, well, the NIV says this. And then they'll come back and say, no, it doesn't, you liar. Well, they're using a different revision of the NIV that's changed. So, and then they'll say that they'll call Gail Ripplinger a liar when she's telling the truth and they're the liars. But if you look in the NIV, in one edition of this, three, John 3.16, he'll say, Jesus is the one and only Son there's a big difference between the one and only Son and the only begotten Son. Well, guess what? Is Jesus the one and only Son? Job 38 says that the sons of God shouted for joy at the foundation of the earth. Sons of God. Well, guess what, people? Adam didn't come till uh, at least six days after the earth was formed. So Adam couldn't be sons, plural, of God. He couldn't be. He wasn't in existence yet. 
So who are these sons of God, plural? They have to be angels. If you look in the Genesis account, first two chapters of Genesis, nowhere in Genesis does it describe the creation of the angels. But yet we know angels exist. We know they do. So they had to have existed before the creation of the earth. Oh, wait, Job 38, that's what it says. Yes, the sons of God shouted for joy at the foundation of the earth. Yes. Makes sense to me. So even if you discounted the angels, is Jesus the only one and only son? Let's take a look. Now in Luke chapter 3, it traces back genealogy. So let's look at Luke 3, 36. I don't want to go read the whole chapter. I mean, you know, uh, I used to get bored reading genealogies. I mean, I know they're in the Bible for a reason. I know that, but uh, boring, but there's a reason. And that's what I used to say, boring. And I used to kind of skip over it. But now I kind of realize uh, all the New Test, I mean, the Old Testament names had meanings. Believe it or not, all the ones that I've looked up, they all have meanings. So it's really interesting when you think about it. So, so is Jesus the one and only son? Luke 3.36, which was the son of Canaan, which was the son of Arphaxad, which was the son of Shem, which was the son of Noah, which was the son of Lamech, and by the way, that, there's two Canaans in the Bible. One from the bad seed and one from the, yeah. Uh, one Canaan was from Ham, the other is from Shem. So, uh, which was the son of Shem, which was the son of Noah, which was the son of Lamech, which was the son of Methuselah, which was the son of Enoch, which was the son of Jared, which was the son of Maliel, which was the son of Canaan, which was the son of Enos, which was the son of Seth, which was the son of Adam, which was the son of God. Did you know Adam was the son of God? Yeah, think about it. Who was his mother? Well, Mother Earth? Well, you could argue that since he was taken from the dust of the ground. But who was, who was Adam's father? God was. God formed him of the dust of the earth and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And Adam became a living soul. Adam is called the son of God. Jesus is called the only begotten son of God. Big difference. Big difference. That's why the virgin birth is so attacked in the modern Bibles. Mary's DNA was not used. People will argue that and say, well, you, you, she's called mother. Well, yeah, she carried him in her womb and Christ was born like any other human child. But Mary's fallen genetic DNA was not used. So... I did an entire study on that. If you're interested, I mean, he called, you know, she was called mother, but. All right, so uh, let's see. Let's go back to begotten. Here's a good one. John 1.18. No man hath seen God at any time. Remember, uh, Christ told the apostles, I think it was, Thomas or Philip uh, said, show us the Father. Christ said, have I been with you so long? If you've seen me, you have seen the Father. I mean, come on, guys, get with the program. If you've seen me, you have seen the Father. 
There was a really good book. I forget what it's called. It was called Jesus Christ, a Lunatic, Liar, or Lord. So was Christ crazy thinking he was the Son of God? Was he a deceiving liar that claimed to be the Son of God? Or... If he's not a lunatic and if he's not a liar, then he's Lord. It was a really good book. Jesus Christ, L lunatic, liar, or Lord. I'm, I'm not sure if it's liar, lunatic, or Lord. or Might be Josh McDowell. Might be. I should look that up. Let me look it up. Yep, Josh McDowell. J-O-S-H-M-C-D-O-W-E-L-L. Uh, he wrote some really good stuff. I got to admit, Josh McDowell wrote some uh, pretty good stuff. So, yeah. So is Jesus crazy? Is he an evil liar? Or is he who he says he is? And I think it's the latter. I really do. Uh, let's take a look at Hebrews chapter one Hebrews chapter one we don't even know who wrote the book of Hebrews uh, if you ask me my guess would be probably Paul but uh, the you know who's didn't like Paul he was trained in all their little tricks of the trade I guess you could say and uh, they would do anything they could to discredit him so maybe that's why the author of Hebrews is silent. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1. God, God, that's a good way to start. God, who at sundry times and in divers' manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds hmm. by whom also he made the worlds I've had people say oh there's only one world that's the earth everything else is fake huh what right here in the Bible it says worlds plural verse 3 who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, that's right, Christ purged our sins. What does it mean to purge? It means to cast away. Purged, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high being made so much better than the angels. Ah, see, there's angels. See, the angels exist. They're not mentioned in Genesis 1 and 2 as being created, but they exist. See, the Bible's not the book of the angels. The Bible's the book of Adam and his descendants and Christ, the Redeemer of the children of Adam. It's not about the angels. The angels are mentioned in certain points and spots, but it's not their book. But it says, verse 4, Christ, speaking of Christ, being made so much better than the angels, as he hath by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. Listen to this carefully. For unto which of the angels said he at any time, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. See, Christ is the only begotten son. This is why I tell everybody, stick with the King James. You know, the Geneva is a good Bible too. Uh, there's nothing wrong with the Geneva that I know of personally. And I used to have a copy of it, but I'll be honest, I never read the whole thing. I did compare some important uh, 
verses with the King Geneva and the King James. And, you know, the word order might be a little different, but the idea was the same. I mean, is it any different if I say to you, I am going to the car, or if I say, to the car I go? Eh, you know, the word order might be a little different, but it means the same thing. It means I am going to travel until I get to the car. And that's, you know, the Geneva and the King James basically say the same thing. So, for unto which of the angels said he at any time, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. And the answer is none, zero. God never told the angels, Thou art my son, and I have begotten you. No, never. There's only one begotten son, and that's Christ Jesus. And again, I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. And again, when he bringeth in the first begotten into the world, he saith, and let all the angels of God worship him. Uh, if Jesus Christ was a mere man, would God let the angels of God worship him? And the answer is no. No, no, no. You know, learning these things takes time. You can either watch television, you can listen to music, you can go to the liquor store and buy Seagram 7, or you can go swimming at the beach or climbing a mountain or a hike on a trail, or you can open up the Bible, read the prayer of James chapter 1 where it says, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. And open the Bible and read it. It's, you know, every time I almost, it seems like virtually every time I read the Bible, uh, do these Bible studies or read the Bible, I find something new that I never found before. I mean, it's just, you know, and then people say, oh, well, you know, just a bunch of shepherds on a hill wrote this stuff. What? Well, then you're a goat. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Yeah, but the goats, well, they follow their father. And again, when he bringeth in the first begotten into the world, he saith, and let all the angels of God worship him. Verse 7. And of the angels he saith, who maketh his angels spirits and his ministers a flame of fire. But unto the Son he saith, now this is God speaking to the Son, but unto the Son he saith, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. God is speaking to his, the Son. But unto the Son he saith, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. Thou hast loved righteousness, and hated iniquity. Therefore God, even thy God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. And thou, Lord, in the beginning, hast laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the works of thine hands. The Bible records that Christ created everything. So who are they talk? What are they talking about here? Think about it. And the heavens are the works of thine hands; they shall perish, 
but thou remainest. And they all shall wax old as doth a garment, and as a vesture shalt thou fold them up, and they shall be changed, but thou art the same, and thy years shall not fail. Their year and thy years shall not fail. And to which of the angels said he at any time, Sit on my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool? Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for, for them who shall be heirs of salvation? Boy, I love the book of Hebrews. Excellent book. You notice it's not the book of the J's. The, you know, rhymes with news, you know, uh, current events, news. Uh, it starts with a J and rhymes with news. Yeah, it's not that book. It's the book of Hebrews. And uh, there you go. All right, let's take a look at a few things. I, I could read the entire chapter of Colossians 1, but in verse 16, speaking of Christ, it says, For by him were all things created, that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. Revelation 4.11 Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. You know, all things were created for the Lord's pleasure. So we need to be pleasurable Ephesians 3 9 and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery the mystery which from the beginning of the world hath been hid in God who created all things by Jesus Christ how about John chapter 1 Verse 1, in the beginning was the Word, no, Christ is the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. If you look at the Jehovah's Witness Bible, they'll insert the word A in there. And the Word was a God. Oh, really? In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was light, and the life was the light of men, and the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. 1 John 4, 9 In this was manifested the love of God toward us, because that God sent his only begotten Son into the world that we might live through him. Oh, yeah. In John 1, 14, And the Word was made flesh. 1 Timothy 3, 16, right? And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory of as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Oh, yeah. All right, let's take a look at Matthew chapter 3. I mean, I could go make an entire study on just, you know, Christ creating all things and uh, being the only begotten Son. But I think that I've covered enough that you get the idea, right? Matthew 3, 13. Then cometh Jesus from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him. But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee, and cometh thou to me? 
And Jesus answering said unto him, Suffer it to be so now, or allow, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he suffered him. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Well, that would be a wake-up call, huh? All right, let's go to Mark chapter 9, the book of Mark, verse 1. And he, Jesus, said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that there be some of them that stand here, which shall not taste of death till they have seen the kingdom of God come with power. Now, there's a group of people called preterists. Uh, they say, well, everything happened in 70 A.D., uh, Christ returned in glory, and he's ruling and reigning from our hearts. And uh, they have to explain away the entire book of Revelation. But did they see the kingdom of God come with power? What about the day of Pentecost? Paul raised people from the dead. Peter healed people. I mean... You know, but then they try to make you think uh, that this present earth is God's kingdom. Is this evil world uh, God's kingdom right now? I don't think so. But hey, I'm just, that's just one guy's opinion. So, and uh, all those that say all past, they have to really, they have to ignore the book of Revelation. They, they can't deal with it. You know, the uh, book of Revelation records a quarter of the earth's population dying, and then a third of, the, of that dying, or either a third and a quarter or a quarter and a third. I forget which order it's in, but uh, you're talking, <laughs> you know, about half the world dying. All right, that's, that's a lot of people. A lot. Verse 2, And after six days Jesus taketh with him Peter and James and John, and leadeth them up into an high mountain apart by themselves, and he was transfigured before them. And his raiment, his clothing, became shining. I guess he was glowing, right? Exceeding white as snow, so as no fuller on earth can white them. Uh, fuller is, I guess, like a, a cleaner, somebody that, uh, you know, helps, well, not just a cleaner, but, uh, you know, if you want uh, a white wedding dress for uh, your, your bride, you know, you want it as white as possible. Well, they're trying to make it as white as possible. That's what a fuller would do. Exceeding white as snow, so as no fuller on earth can white them. And there appeared unto them Elias with Moses. That's Elijah. Elijah never died. Moses died. So Elijah, the prophet, which I just did a series on. Well, I did an entire Bible study on that. So here it is, Jesus is transfigured, and there's Elijah, and there's Moses. Well, this is, Elias is the Greek rendering of Elijah. And they were talking with Jesus. Now, what did Moses represent? The law. Didn't Moses come down with the Ten Commandments? Oh, yeah. What did Elias, or Elijah, what did he represent? The prophets, the law and the prophets, and they're talking with Christ. That would have been an interesting conversation to, to listen to. 
And Peter answered and said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here, and let us make three tabernacles, one for thee, and one for Moses, and one for Elias. For he wist not what to say. He didn't know what to say. For they were sore afraid. And there was a cloud that overshadowed them, and a voice came out of the cloud, saying, This is my beloved son, Hear him. And suddenly when they had looked round about, they saw no man anymore, save Jesus only with themselves. And as they came down from the mountain, he, Jesus, charged them that they should tell no man what things they had seen till the Son of Man were risen from the dead. Yeah, so after Christ was risen from the dead, then you could tell the story, right? And they kept that saying with themselves, questioning one another, one with another, what the rising from the dead should mean. And they asked him, saying, Why say the scribes that Elias must first come? Well, it's in the Bible. And he, Jesus, answered and told them, Elias verily cometh first, and restoreth all things, and how it is written of the Son of Man, that he must suffer many things and be set at naught. But I say unto you that Elias is indeed come, and they have done unto him whatsoever they listed, as it is written of him. And of course, Christ compared John the Baptist with Elias or Elijah. John the Baptist was not Elijah. Uh, otherwise, you're knocking on the door of reincarnation, which, no. Let the rabbis teach reincarnation. Bible doesn't teach that. Bible records it is appointed unto men once to die, and after this, the judgment. But Elias, Elijah never died. So, and he's going to come back one day. He's going to be one of the two witnesses that confronts the beast and the false prophet. And who's the second one? I don't know. Some people say Moses, others say Enoch. I'm kind of partial to Enoch, but that's just my opinion. So... Luke has an interesting uh, thing in chapter 3, verse 22, uh, speaking of John baptizing Jesus. It says, And the Holy Ghost descended in a bodily shape like a dove upon him. Now, if the Holy Ghost is mere electricity, power of God type stuff, why, why would the Holy Ghost descend in a bodily shape like a dove? And why a dove? Uh, remember uh, in the days of Noah, he let out a dove and the dove came back with a olive branch in its mouth? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And the Holy Ghost descended in a bodily shape like a dove upon him, and a voice came from heaven which said, Thou art my beloved Son, in thee I am well pleased. So, God the Father speaking to his Son. All right, let's go to John chapter 12, verse 23. And Jesus answered them, saying, the hour is come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. Well, yeah, you take a seed and you plant it. The seed's destroyed. But a plant grows in its place and brings forth fruit, right? Verse 25, he that loveth his life shall lose it. 
And he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. So if you love your life in this world, you're going to lose it. But if you hate this life in this world, and you're in Christ, you'll keep it unto life eternal. Verse 26, If any man serve me, let him follow me, and where I am, there shall also my servant be. If any man serve me, him will my father honor. Now is my soul troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour, but for this cause came I into this hour. Father, glorify thy name. Then came there a voice from heaven saying, I have both glorified it and will glorify it again. A voice from heaven. The people therefore that stood by and heard it said that it thundered. Others said, An angel spake to him. Jesus answered and said, This voice came not because of me, but for your sakes. Now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out. And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. And how was Jesus lifted up from the earth? Verse 33. This he said, signifying what death he should die. The cross. You know, they put you up on a cross so everybody can look. Just look up and see, right? You know, let's read first uh, Colossians chapter 1. Wonderful chapter. All right, Colossians chapter 1, verse 1. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, and Timotheus, our brother. To the saints and faithful brethren in Christ, which are at Colossae, grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We give thanks to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you. Since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love which ye have to all the saints, for the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, whereof ye heard before in the word of the truth of the gospel, which is come unto you, as it is in all the world, and bringeth forth fruit, as it doth also in you, since the day ye heard of it, and knew the grace of God in truth. As ye also learned of Epap Haras, dear fellow servant, who is for you a faithful minister of Christ, who also declared unto us your love in the Spirit, for this cause, we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that ye, may, that ye might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Strengthened with all might, according to his glorious power, unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness, giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son. See, 
Remember when uh, Christ said uh, there would not be some that would taste of death until they seen the power of uh, the kingdom of God come in power or something along that line? Well, it tells you right here. Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness, this present world, right? And hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. In whom we have redemption through his blood. Oh. In whom we have redemption through his blood. Even the forgiveness of sins. See, the new Bible versions remove blood. Verse 15. Speaking of Christ here. Who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature? Now, that's obviously talking about his body here. Christ was the firstborn in the flesh. Christ was in the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. Verse 16. For by him were all things created. Christ created all things. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible whether they be thrones or dominions or princi principal principalities or power, all things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things. Christ is before all things. He existed before anything was created. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. And having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself, by him I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. And you that were sometime alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, ye now hath, yet now hath he reconciled. In the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. If, oh, there's that big if, if ye continue in the faith grounded and settled and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel which ye have heard and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven, whereof I, Paul, am made a minister. Who now rejoice in my sufferings for you, and fill up that which is behind of the afflictions of Christ in my flesh, for his body's sake, which is the church. Whereof I am made a minister, according to the dispensation of God. God, which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of God. Do you know what that word dispensation means? Well, if you listen to the modern Baptist church, they'll say, oh, that means a period of time. No, it doesn't, you liar. Dispensation comes from the word dispense. You ever heard of a soap dispenser? What does a soap dispenser do? Uh, is it a clock? If you listen to the Baptist church, oh, it's a clock. Yeah, soap dispenser. That's a clock. It's a period of time. No. When you put your hands under a soap dispenser, it gives you soap. It's not a clock. Dispense. Have you ever heard of dispense? 
means to do away with or to give something. Well, guess what? The Baptist will tell you there's seven dispensations in the Bible. Well, I can't find them. And I've looked. I only see two. Moses dispensed the law from the hands of God. And Christ gave us grace. The Old Testament, the New Testament. The Old Covenant, the New Covenant. God dispensed the law to Moses, and Christ dispensed grace. You want to live under law, or do you want to live under grace? And all the you-know-whos and their little Noahides, they want to go back under the law. Let them. Let them go back under the law. I don't care. Whereof I am made a minister according to the dispensation of God, which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of God. Verse 26. Even the mystery which hath been hid from ages and from generation, but now is made manifest to his saints. To whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles which is Christ in you, the hope of glory, whom we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. Whereunto I also labor, striving according to his working, which worketh in me mightily. Sorry, Mr. Baptist Bible teachers, I can't find your seven dispensations. And it's not a period of time. Look up dis dispensation. Dispense. It means to give something. I mean, that's how, you know, they have to lie to make the Bible teach what they want it to teach. It's horrible. And you know what? Those liars will even tell you that um, after the pre-trib rapture, when uh, the church flies away, that the, to, to have salvation, you're going to have to keep the law. Oh, really? So, isn't that another gospel? Sounds like another gospel to me keep the law really so we're gonna have to have a, another temple doing animal sacrifices i gotta bring a a, a lamb to uh mr cohen rabbi cohen and have him uh sacrifice it so that if i miss the rapture really and you wonder why i have no respect for these bible teachers Virtually none. I, and I don't even think, I don't even know if they're even saved. Honestly. I mean, if these people were honest to God, true ministers of Christ, wouldn't the Lord show them the truth, the errors of their ways? I, I, I think so. You know, if you search diligently, the Lord will show you. That's just the way it is. So, all right, well, that's the end of this series. Jesus and the Father are one, but they're different. It's just like your body, your soul, and your spirit. You're one per they make up one person. But you got three different parts. And it's a mystery of God. Do I understand it? No. I'm just showing you the Bible verses that uh, show you all this stuff. And if you ever figure it out, let me know. Because I, I, I'd like to know myself. But uh, it's a mystery. 
God was manifest in the flesh. 1 Timothy 3.16 Boy, I'll tell you what. And like all the other religions, they teach that man can become God. Man can achieve Godhood. But Christianity teaches that God became man. And died for our wickedness to so that we could be reconciled back to the Lord. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God, slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' name, amen.